about one in four people on the planet live without access to electricity. As night falls, there are vast areas of the world, especially in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of Asia, which are left in total darkness, without a glimmer of light. Now, a rural electrification program in India and Tanzania is changing the lives of thousands of people in remote communities, delivering economic, social, and environmental progress. The Global Electrical Engineering Group, ABB, is working with local communities, NGOs, and state authorities to ensure long-term sustainable development. Electricity is quite literally the spark, the catalyst for change. ABB launched its Access to Electricity program in response to the appeal in 2000 by the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan for multinational companies to do more to support sustainable development. Despite droughts and recession, public-private partnerships to provide electricity are improving lives in a variety of ways. Deep in the deserts of Rajasthan, in western India, where villagers struggle to make ends meet, electrification is paving the way for a better and brighter future. Families are now saving money on the cost of fuel. Since the coming of solar light, each household has been able to save between 200 and 250 rupees per month because we don't have to buy kerosene from the market. ABB teamed up with state authorities and a local NGO some two years ago to bring solar-powered light to a remote community. Now the project has spread to more than 1,000 homes in 11 villages covering 7,000 people. The houses are set too far apart for a mini electrical grid to be practical. So solar power, clean and practical, generated using panels on huts, is the electricity source of choice. The cost of a solar panel, its installation and wiring, is shared equally between ABB, the NGO, and the householder. The impact has been dramatic. Electric light allows tailors and weavers to work in the cool of the early morning or late at night avoiding searing daytime temperatures of up to 50 degrees Celsius. The weaver's productivity and incomes are rising as a result, with some now earning 50 percent more. These gorgeous carpets require precision work. A slip of the hand can be costly, and electric light allows the weavers to focus better and improve quality. Having a mobile phone in this remote area and being able to charge it for free is also driving his income. He now works to order by phone. Yes, yes, I can deliver that within a week. His order book is booming. And Taylor's incomes have risen by up to 40% since the lights came on. In the cool of the evening, they press ahead with their work. One of the most dramatic improvements is at the local school where teachers can now give classes after dark. The number of children attending this school has doubled. They can study more, and an increasing number are passing exams. We've had a lot of benefits from solar light. We hold coaching classes for weak children at night, and more children have started coming to school. In this parched area of Rajasthan, the progress that electricity has brought is tangible. But that progress could be undermined by climate change. Water is like gold dust here. The drought is so extreme that dishes are cleaned in sand. And additional water is being bought from the local government at about a dollar for six liters. Down the hill in a specialist enclave, ABB has provided a concrete water well adding to the village's existing porous limestone wells. There's less water erosion. The well and pipelines that are being added also means less time is lost in the daily quest for water. On another continent, in a remote part of southern Tanzania, another access to electricity project is also bringing economic, social, and environmental progress to the community. In 2005, ABB set up an electrical mini-grid in the village of Engarambe on the edge of the Selus National Park. 
working closely with the villagers and partnering with the authorities and the WWF, the Global Conservation Organization, the aim was to trigger sustainable development with electricity as the agent of change. All partners brought their skills to the project. ABB provided the diesel power generator which brings four hours of electricity to the village after nightfall. Villagers were trained to use and maintain the generator. ABB engineers installed the grid, laying underground cables and wiring up homes, the health clinic, the school and shops. About 100 are now linked to the mini-grid, double the number in 2005. For Partners WWF, the focus has been on crop and forest management and conservation, key issues in an area prone to a variety of problems, from drought and excessive logging to marauding elephants. The advances triggered by electricity have been remarkable. At the village school, the head teacher has seen the number of children attending swell from 250 to 400. And the number of teachers has almost doubled. At the health clinic, a doctor can now treat her patients day and night. She sees more than 20 patients a day. The most common complaints? Malaria pneumonia and malnutrition. Because we now have electricity, we're able to treat patients at night, including pregnant women. Tonight, her visitor is pregnant and needs further examination. The alternative to this clinic, not ideal if you're ill or pregnant, is a long and bone-shaking journey down a deeply rutted road to the nearest hospital. On the main street, despite the recession which has hit hard, shopkeepers are staying open later and earning more. The more people earn, the more they can afford electricity. Because we now have electricity, I'm able to braid hair at night, which has earned me extra money, so electricity is very beneficial to me. The villagers are mainly subsistence farmers, earning less than a dollar a day. They cultivate maize, millet, sesame, sunflowers, and rice. There were two significant innovations in early 2010 which are boosting incomes. An electric sunflower and sesame oil press which runs after dark and further down the road a small sawmill and wood factory is open day and night. It has two electrical machines and employs 30 people. A finished door sells for nearly four times as much as the logs that are used to make it. Logging in the area has dropped by 90%, easing pressure on the environment. At first, electricity was heavily subsidized, but as villagers' incomes gradually increase, they can afford to pay more and subsidies will drop away. The aim? For the grid to become self-sustaining. Another innovation is on the horizon to replace the costly diesel used in the generator with a natural, cheap, and more environmentally friendly oil from Jatropha. The Jatropha oil seed is now being grown in ever-increasing quantities around the village, but not at the expense of food crops. For WWF project leader Cyprian Malima, this sustainable solution is within reach. We are expected to have a bumper harvest of Jatropha in four years' time. That's when we will replace diesel fuel with the Jatropha. As villagers in Tanzania and India enjoy the sustainable benefits of electrical power, a question remains. How to lift promising projects like these out of the sphere of philanthropy and establish a business case for them? An answer lies in external financing. If companies are to pursue such projects, selling rather than donating products, they need to be commercial as well as social ventures. The business case plus the realization of human rights to the benefit of all concerned. For the people of a desert community in Rajasthan and a remote area of southern Tanzania, ABB's access to electricity program has changed their lives, sustainably and long term. It's a step-by-step -step approach, one village at a time. The potential 
is vast.